All right, so today we're looking at a 2021 Ram 1500 57 Hemi. Um, the problem with this vehicle is it surges, uh, has a misfire, and just doesn't run great at all. I'll kind of show you what it's doing here. I don't know if you can really hear it. I'm trying to keep the windows up in this thing because there's a lot of noise in this shop today, but. Uh, see if that's a little better. You can see it's surging, it's, it's struggling to run. It actually off oh, stalled right there, so. So definitely have a misfire, engine lights flashing, uh, surging, struggling to run. So um, let's just uh, scan this vehicle and see if we've got any codes relevant to this issue. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and do our misfire counter here. I think we'd start. Yeah, see, this is going to be a bit of an issue here to get this thing to run because it will not monitor the uh, misfire unless it's running smooth, decently smooth, I guess. Um, yeah, there we go. It's clocking on cylinder one pretty good now. Uh, not so much on any other cylinders. It kind of was at first, but that's just because it was running so poorly. It was having a hard time figuring out which cylinder was what. But uh, we do have a dead miss on cylinder one. And uh, I'll just kind of show you what I heard here with this thing. Um, when I was cranking, I'm just going to put it in clear flood mode. You hear kind of a galloping sound. That's uh, usually a pretty good indicator of uh, some sort of mechanical issue um, internal. Um, so you, that, that one kind of gallop you're hearing is uh, when the starter hits the uh, cylinder with no or low compression, the starter speeds up and then on the next cylinder where it hits compression, it'll hit that. And that, that's where you get that sound, that kind of galloping sound from. So that's not really a great sound. Um, I think what we're going to do is start there and just uh, do a relative compression and a, um, a vacuum trace on it just to kind of confirm our suspicions here that this thing has some sort of engine mechanical issue. This is a quick look at the uh, scan tool screen. We're going to start the vehicle up here in a minute, and you can see that it's it's running rough enough. It's setting misfires on those cylinders. We're just going to try and uh, use the throttle here to smooth it out, and as soon as it does, you'll see that the number one cylinder misfire counter starts taking off. So really, we're um, we're dealing with a cylinder number one misfire here. It's What I've done here, I've got the I've got the vacuum transducer hooked up to the uh, vacuum line for the brake booster, and a uh, current probe hooked around the um, positive uh, battery cable. I couldn't get it around the uh, negative battery cable, um, but we're just going to crank this thing over now. I've also pulled the fuel pump fuse just so it doesn't start. Um, you could do clear flood mode, but then you wouldn't get a good vacuum trace because you'd have the um, intake uh, flap wide open. So the um, best way to do it is just to uh, unplug the uh, fuel pump or remove the fuse or the relay or whatever you can here. So let's see what we got going on. Okay, I guess there's a little bit of fuel on the rail there, but that'll work. Actually, it didn't start there for the first little bit. You can see... Um, our blue is a relative compression here, and you can see there's a, a hole on every, oh, let's zoom in here and see, whoops. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So on each, uh, on, on the eighth, um, I guess, compression stroke here, uh, you can see that there's a significantly less um, amperage being drawn by that starter, which kind of tells us there is low compression in uh, the one cylinder. I'm going to assume it's number one because uh, number one is the one that's clocking all the misfires. So uh, what I'm going to do, um, you, can, you can also see in the, uh, in the intake trace there, the spikes. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do an in-cylinder uh, compression uh, test with the... Um, the pressure train the in cylinder pressure transducer and see uh see what we got there uh see if we can't pinpoint what exactly the issue is with that cylinder
It's kind of a bit of a mess here, but we got our WPX500 hooked up into the number one spark plug hole there uh, for a number one cylinder. Um, let's go in here and get it running on the scoop. Now we're just going to turn on our third channel here, WPX 500 range 1, we'll go 25 to 100 PSI because I don't think we're going to be over 100 PSI here, but we'll see. Just restart that. I guess there's still some fuel in the rail, which is kind of interesting. frustrating because I just had this thing cranking over for like 30 seconds before I don't know how but okay I don't even see anything on that wow okay yeah there's <laughs> there's no compression in that number one cylinder like at all I'll zoom in on that closer and explain it on the uh, on the screen recording. All right, so this is the uh, recording that Jordan took. Uh, the blue trace here is cranking compression. The red trace is intake vacuum, and the green trace down at the bottom is uh, in cylinder pressure on cylinder number one. Now, without getting into this too deep, I'm just going to set a cursor here. And so I've set my cursor at the zero pressure line and I'm just going to bring up a pen here. You can see here, this is the missing compression stroke. The vacuum trace, instead of being eight uh, equal pulses, it's, it's horrific, which means the uh, pressure in the intake manifold is changing rapidly, but this is the compression, um, so in cylinder compression trace from cylinder number one. You can see I've got the cursor set at zero PSI here. So basically, this cylinder is making uh, zero compression. Now, it doesn't take a genius to figure out here that uh, we've got a definite mechanical problem with cylinder number one. So we're just gonna take a little bit of a deeper dive on this cylinder, see if we can figure out exactly what's going on here. Okay, we're gonna do another screen recording here of uh, running in cylinder. If it would even stay running. Okay, there we go. It's kind of running. Now, oh, let's get back into the search here. Gonna have to do it at 2000 RPM. That's the only time it'll run smooth. So, um, yeah, I really don't see any uh, any kind of compression there on our in cylinder. We'll just go back over to it. Zoom in here. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, there's definitely a problem there, and I'll I'll explain it again on the uh, on the screen recording because it's easier to see there. So this screen is slightly different than the screen um, that we uh, showed in vehicle on the actual laptop, and the only thing that's different here is we've added this blue trace, uh, and we've taken it from being the uh, starter current to basically, um, this is the number one ignition coil on off type circuit. So that's why it kind of looks a lot noisier than what it was. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go in and clean that up a bit. Kind of messy looking. All right. A little bit better. So all I've done here is turn a filter on and I'm going to move 
that up a little bit. So we still have our vacuum trays and we have our in cylinder. And the engine is obviously running at this point. So I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. Just try and get a better look at it. Now keep in mind, we know that we've got a definite problem on uh, cylinder number one, mechanical. Right. So this is a single um, compression event. I'm just going to put some markers on here. Uh, we kind of know where we are. So this would be the start of the, or sorry, the peak of the compression stroke on cylinder number one. Here's where it repeats itself. So we're looking at 720 degrees um, of crankshaft rotation through here. So my strokes would be, uh, this would be typically my power stroke, my exhaust stroke, my intake stroke, and my um, compression stroke. Very quickly, we can see that the ignition system is firing right around top dead center. So that's pretty good. now. I'm going to bring down my zero line again, so let me know where zero compression is. I'm going to get a pen out here so I can kind of explain this a little bit. So this is top dead center compression. So this would be typically uh, the power stroke, but since the engine's not running, um, not really a compression stroke, it's more of an expansion stroke. Having said that though, the cylinder is being pulled down into a vacuum here. You can see the vacuum breaking in the cylinder right about there, which in indicates that we've got uh, exhaust valve action Now this is typically the exhaust stroke. Now we start to build uh, a little bit of pressure in here, not too bad. And then this would be the intake stroke right here. Now this cylinder is being pulled somewhat down into a vacuum, which would um, indicate that uh, there is some kind of a seal here. Now. When we go back upon the compression stroke, it's it's not making any compression, or it makes a little bit of compression. I think that's what, two or three psi or something. And then we go back down into cylinder vacuum, which means that the cylinder is not sealing properly up in through here. And and what happens up in through here is the intake valve gets opened to do the uh, do the intake stroke. But then it has to close to seal the cylinder, and it's it's closing uh, way late, which indicates to me that there's some kind of a problem with the way the intake valve is operating on this vehicle. Now, we kind of suspect a uh, cam lobe or something like that, but uh, we're going to have to take the valve cover off this thing so we can get a better look at it. And uh, I'll, I do have a picture of. Uh, what we found when we got the valve cover off it and, um, or when the shop took the valve cover off it and I'll show you that in, in a second or two here. We had the shop uh, remove the valve cover and they were kind enough to send us a picture of what they found when they started to take the valve train apart on the intake side and you can, this is the intake valve uh, spring. You can see that it's broken uh, in a couple of spots. So this one came down to being a bad intake valve spring, which was kind of unusual on a 2021 vehicle. But anyway, there you have it. If you like this video, please let us know by following us or liking us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And if you want access to more in-depth uh, training videos, please visit our website at www.autoaid.ca. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video.